Hi, today we're going to be looking at the urban hierarchy and, and the whole idea as we look at urbanization um, is the process of which we can see people um, centering around a, some sort of core area, basically creating a nucleated um, settlement uh, in which we generally see different um, levels or higher levels of services um, being provided and, and that um, this in the surrounding areas, or we look at the hinterlands, we see, you know, obviously a change in the types of, of settlement patterns that you would find. Um, so, looking at the urban hierarchy models, or the definitions of, we'll we'll start from the smallest and then we'll go to the largest. Um, but a couple things before we get going. First of all, where are they? Uh, generally speaking, we can talk about a lot of different physical geography characteristics, uh, whether it's um, the topography, the physical landscape, uh, the climate, resources that are available, the accessibility, whether it's because of um, you know, developed cultural landscape um, um, or th rail or uh, you know, road transportation, um, port cities, wh whatever that might be, um, you know, are going to define where these particular um, ur urban settlements are. Uh, according to Chris Dollar's central place theory, uh, centrality governs, basically meaning that uh, accessibility of services and things provided by a particular urban area um, are going to drive where settlement's going to take place. And so again, as we, we look at, um, regardless of size, there's generally some sort of core that defines this, an urban area. Other things to consider, uh, cities are places of consumption, again, so where services are provided, whether low order or high order types of services, um, you're going to find generally even in a, the smallest hamlet town that usually centered around um, something like a gas station or a very basic um, convenience store, if anything at all. Uh, generally speaking, again, we're going to see small towns have lower order services, uh, things that at a very basic level, uh, maybe a, a single diner restaurant, a small uh, uh, family run uh, retail store. Uh, gas station, things like that. Larger cities are going to have more complex or specialized types of services. Jewelries, professional services like a lawyer, accountant, doctors. Um, you know, you're going to see more um, specific types of services provided for a narrower uh, consumer base. Um, and they tend to be places where people will travel to to seek out that particular type of service. So as we look at some of the examples that we could talk about, things I've some I've mentioned, um, other things like a bar or a tavern, um, auto some sort of auto service, uh, bank, things like that. You might even in Minnesota you probably even include a Dairy Queen, uh, high order services, jewelry stores, professional sports, uh, you know, or franchises, uh, movie theaters, things that are going to be more specific and be supported uh, in a larger population. So let's start from small, we'll go to the, the largest, um, but looking at a hamlet uh, are going to be where you're going to find primarily rural areas and there might be a small core um, centered around um, maybe a church, maybe a gas station, um, if there's any services at all. Uh, this could be you know, a maximum of a, of a population of 150. Generally speaking, the, the population is probably pretty dispersed around the particular area. There, you're probably not going to see a whole lot of population density in, in this kind of arrangement. Moving towards a village, we see obviously a little bit bigger than a hamlet. Uh, there's no public transportation. Generally speaking, you can walk through a village on foot um, in a very reasonable time. Uh, and, and there's usually more services, but they tend to be pretty basic. Again, those low order services that you would find in, in any particular uh, urban area where there's a, a fairly significant population. Towns tend to be um, you know, something that is centered similar to a village where you're going to have a, a, some sort of urban core. Uh, even though it's pretty basic or limited, it's uh, the surrounding areas, the hinterland is generally going to be farming or agriculture. But in a town setting, this can be up to now 50,000 people and you're going to see some more specialized types of services. This might be a, des a designation place or a place of travel for you know, a, a, a small farm in rural areas. Um, there's probably some sort of main street and oftentimes there might be even an industry. So Austin, for example, uh, having the Hormel plant where it uh, brings a, a significant economic impact to a particular region uh, that creates uh, a greater draw for some of the higher order services. 
a city um, is going to start to see more defined uh, industrial, residential, and commercial areas that uh, you're going to start to see neighborhoods and you're going to see particular parts of the, the urban area being defined by those particular um, services that are being provided or in, in some cases just the, the urban housing or, or suburban housing. Uh, there's going to be some sort of central government uh, that you know a greater presence of organization and higher level services uh, and and more specialized and so we could look at Rochester and Minnesota as a perfect example uh, looking at the Mayo Clinic you know very highly specialized type of service um, for medical care people could travel from all around coming into the the core and and utilizing those specialized services even bigger yet is the metropolis, uh, the Minneapolis Twin Cities, Minneapolis St. Paul metro area, the Twin Cities, is a perfect example of this because it, it, it highlights the fact that it absorbs surrounding settlements, that there really is no defined boundaries. Uh, you have these very defined areas with the industrial, commercial, um, uh, uh, residential areas, uh, but it's pretty distinct. There's a broad, um, array of services provided both low and high order services you have professional franchises you have industrial areas you have um, professional services like lawyers doctors attorneys um, and lots of gas stations retail um, convenience stores just about everything you can imagine and this is going to be something up to uh, five million people so most metro areas um, that we see in states would would fall under this categories um, that we as we talk about the uh, the idea of a metropolis even bigger yet is a megalopolis, and this is going to be uh, where you start to see that urban landscape becoming uniform um, as you go from one uh, metropolis to another. And this, you know, a perfect example of this would be the New England area when you start to look at the East Coast in the United States, um, that it just sort of is one continuous area that becomes a, a greater influence. Um, other places uh, like uh, Tokyo is a is a, a prime example of a megalopolis. Uh, you know, 35 million people, and it, it, it just sort of just ex continues to extend. It sprawls out and encompasses other um, previously maybe defined urban areas, and it becomes uh, you know a, a place of attraction for culture and um, high, very specific high level services that probably only function or are are seen in um, these highly uh, densely populated areas. So looking at that, um, again, just highlighting uh, those the different types going from smallest to largest. We have our hamlet, village, town, city, metropolis, and megalopolis. And that defines when we talk about the urban hierarchy.